it's very rare that an IP gets rebooted and the new people responsible actually respect the source material. It doesn't matter if it's video games, it's movies, it's television. It just seems when an old classic gets revived that the focus is making it approachable for modern audiences and they stop giving a shit about what made the original special. That does not seem to be the case with Robocop Rogue City. If anything, it certainly looks like a game where the creators, the devs, they have looked at it and decided, how can we make this game feel like the 80s movie? And I think they've delivered. Is it going to be an amazing game? We'll have to wait and see, but I do think it at least respects the original Robocop movie. The aesthetic, the UI, the feel of the city, the characters, it does feel like sort of going home to that original 80s movie. I enjoyed the first couple. Even Peter Weller, the voice actor of the original couple of Robocop movies, the actor, he is voicing the character again. And I think it's the first time he's done so in a film in something like 20 years. So it's pretty cool to see him back. I've checked out the demo of the game, which you can download. It's a pretty meaty demo from what everyone has been saying. I'm probably not going to play it all the way through because I want to save some surprises for the release. However, what I've played has been interesting, more interesting than I was expecting. I made the brave prediction when I saw that there was going to be a Robocop game that it'd be some sort of shooter, and, and it certainly is. But when I got into it, started playing, I thought, eh, this isn't super exciting. You're one-shotting enemies for the most part, which kind of makes sense. He's an OP character, but at the same time, the game's still going to be fun and it's going to be challenging. I played on a normal difficulty. There were a couple of harder ones, but I just wanted to jump into it. And I was pretty much one-shotting everyone. There's later some enemies that have head armor and it gets slightly more interesting. But for the most part, the shooting is basic. The weapons, you've got his signature gun, which has infinite ammo. You can pick up some machine guns and assault rifles and things, but it's pretty bare bones, at least so far in the shooting department. So I was sort of thinking, I don't know about this, if this is going to be the whole game, I'll probably lose interest. But it started to get more interesting when I progressed a little bit and there was a skill system. The skills, many of them are combat focused, but there's, for instance, persuasion. So there is a dialogue system where I imagine there is skill checks for dialogue. And that started to get me kind of thinking about immersive sims. And I thought maybe this is what they're going for. I actually saw that Robocop is being made by the development team behind a recent Terminator game that was quite good. It was an RPG, certainly not AAA by any measure, but the developers are clearly quite passionate. There's no microtransactions, there's clearly a lot of passion there from the devs. They respected the Terminator source material as they've done with Robocop, and I'm confident that they genuinely want to deliver a good game that, that actually feels in some ways like classic games, those immersive sims like a Deus Ex. And, and Robocop really started to get me thinking about Deus Ex because you've got those hub worlds a little bit like in Human Revolution, Mankind Divided, where you walk around a, a smaller area, not open world, but enough to allow you to experience side quests and, and approach challenges in slightly different ways. Is it going to be as in-depth as, as a human revolution? I wouldn't think so. It's it's still that kind of basic game. It's probably going to be sort of 30, 40 hours with a lot of shooting, probably not a heap of immersive sim elements. But just the fact that they're trying gets me intrigued. There haven't been enough immersive sim titles in recent times, so seeing anything like that gets me excited. Dishonored has clearly been put on ice for some time, although there's been some leaks to suggest it may be coming back, which is nice. I'll be keeping an eye on that. But you look at Deus Ex itself. Put on ice, we got a Marvel game, the, the Avengers. We got Guardians of the Galaxy, which are... Guardians of the Galaxy at least well made, but I would love to see Ados Montreal, the developer, go back to Deus Ex. And there are some rumours to suggest they may be doing that. So maybe we are starting to enter a period where immersive sims could make a comeback. And if something like Rogue City, Robocop, can start that, I'd really, really be happy. What I want to see from this game is 
to pull back a little bit on the FPS elements because again, it, it bare bones. If it's just corridors, shooting, shooting, which the intro level of the game kind of gives you, that would get boring fast. I hope that the intro that you'll see when you play it, it, it goes probably a, a little bit too long. You'll start to be losing interest and then suddenly it gets interesting with the skill system, the hub worlds. So I hope the quests in the game, the missions, they really do focus on how to approach an area. If you think of Cyberpunk, despite some of the mixed reception at launch, I always really liked how it allowed you to approach situations differently. Entering, say, a building, it was not go through the front door and shoot your way in every time. You could sneak in through a vent. You could go underneath. You could climb up through a manhole or something like that. There was always a different way. And then you look at your skills. Are you going to shoot your way? Are you going to stealth your way in? Are you going to use gadgets? Are you going to hack devices? That sort of stuff, it's what I want to see in Rogue City. And I saw a glimpse of it. And I hope we can keep going there. My problem with, I suppose, gamers addressing these games is it, is it feels like sometimes not everyone cares about those gameplay elements. They focus on, is it janky? How are the graphics? And with Rogue City, it's a mix, right? There's oftentimes where the graphics look quite good for a, a non-AAA game, and there are some times where the graphics look laughable. For instance, you'll shoot an enemy and blood will splatter everywhere. Sometimes it looks okay on the wall, it looks quite realistic, but there'll be other times where there's guts on the floor and it, it looks like something out of Half-Life or something like that. The original Half-Life, I should say. But I don't care so much about the graphics, but I just know screenshots of something like that will do the rounds and it will turn off a lot of on-the-fence kind of casual people who might have bought the game if word of mouth was strong enough. That always just seems to be the way these days, that if word of mouth falls off a cliff, even slightly, I'm talking about right on the edge, the cliff could be sort of one meter high, and, and, and still, anything that sort of goes negatively, people start calling the game a joke, it's total shit, I'm never playing it. And it's unfortunate sometimes, because if that happens, people will stop buying it, and we won't get other ones of this nature. And Publishers, developers will purely focus on what's going to generate hype initially to get those pre-orders, get sales coming in early so that they can guarantee those numbers. Whereas if people take a step back and go, all right, Rogue City, not the most polished game in the world, but if it plays like a Deus Ex and it's even only half of a Deus Ex in terms of quality, a quarter, a six, I don't really care if it's going to give me that vibe. I'm happy to pay for it. I'm happy to support it. There is some talk about the game maybe needing more time in the oven, and, and I mean, that's a given these days. When does a game come out and it's genuinely ready? It seems to only happen if the developer just has that time available from maybe past successes. I know Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't completely finished. The third act still needs some work to this day, but they had the past success of Divinity Original Sin 2 backing that up. They could afford to spend a bit more time on it, which is really good. Something like Rogue City, the Terminator game that they made before sold probably okay from what I've seen, but probably not enough for them to let Rogue City Robocop stew more and, and ensure that it's a quality polished title at release. It, it kind of... I'm torn on it a little bit because I want them to be able to get it out, start making some money so that they can improve it confidently and they can continue to make games. But if they release it half-baked, and it does start to get shat on by the general public online, then you're just going to lose those sales long time, long term for the quick rewards, which really isn't worth it. So I hope that they can strike a balance. From what I played, it wasn't super polished, but it was playable enough. And I just hope the quests, the hub worlds, as you get into it, do live up to it. When it comes to hub worlds, my, my only concern there is we've seen it with something like Vampire the Masquerade, which has a similar structure in terms of hub worlds and submissions and kind of exploring, where they upfront all of the good content, where if you play that game, as much of a classic as it is, I think most people would agree that the first area especially is the highest quality and there's diminishing returns as you continue on. So hopefully in Robocop that's not the case, where the first area feels really good, there's some good missions, it, it does feel like a nice experience, but then you go to Hub 2 and, and it totally falls away. Please don't let it be a corridor shooter 
for the second half because we remember that from Bloodlines where some people even say to skip the last third of the game or something because it ends up just being an FPS fest, which would be nice if the combat was really good, but not the case in that game, not the case in, in Rogue City either. The gunplay again is pretty bare bones, so I want that focus on the immersive sim elements. Looking at, at Deus Ex now, because I just keep thinking about that series, again, there's been rumours that there could be a new Deus Ex in development. Man, I, I really hope that it comes to fruition. I, I hope with Embracer Group, the studio, the publisher, whatever we call them, they've been sort of falling apart, they've been losing money, they lost the Saudi Arabia investment money, billions of dollars, and they've been closing studios left, right and centre. Ados Montreal, who they now own, they bought them from Square Enix, I believe. They've, they've never really been single-handedly responsible for a bad game. They again made Human Revolution, they made Mankind Divided, and Mankind Divided may have had its issues, but at the end of the day it was well made, it just seems like they were forced to rush it before they could finish the story. They were involved, I believe, in Marvel's Avengers, but I don't think the problems necessarily with their responsibility. We've seen so much recently where a single player studio gets tasked with making a live service and it's a total disaster because they're not sticking to their strengths. We saw it somewhat with Redfall where Arkane were forced to, to move away from what really made them a, a name in the gaming space. And we're seeing it also right now with Rocksteady, who are making Suicide Squad. It, it looks goddamn awful, and, and they're forced to do something with it. They've wasted eight years on that game. Can you believe it? But then Ados, they did manage to regroup, and they put out Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not really a big Marvel person. I don't care, but I was glad to see that the reception for that game was positive in terms of it being well made, and, and it shows that they've still got it. So if they can move to Deus Ex, if something like Rogue City can show that there's an audience for these games, Bethesda, who had in their, in their hands some really, really nice immersive sim series, like, for instance, the Dishonored series, and, and everything else Arcane have done, like Prey, they had these great IPs potentially to use and keep expanding on, and they marketed them like shit. They went out there and, and advertised these series like they were FPS, not like they were almost like RPGs. You can play things your own way. They didn't do that. It was all about the set pieces and blowing things up. It wasn't about taking things at your own pace, hacking, stealth, really approaching things the way that you want to. They've never marketed it that way. And I can even say with Rogue City, it took a while to really see that there are RPG elements there. Beforehand, when you sort of looked it up a few months ago, word of mouth was probably that it was just going to be a rail kind of shooter, a really linear experience. So I hope studios can be confident and say, this is an immersive sim. This is a game where you can make your own choices. We're taking risks here and we want this to be something that you want to play. So Rogue City, I'm probably going to cool off until the full release but I am going to support it. I'm going to buy it at launch because I'm happy enough with what I've seen. These games, are, eventually they won't be there if no one buys them at launch. If everyone waits for a sale, they simply won't be made. And, and it's not up to me so to make the decision for you, but if it's something you, you can justify buying, maybe you want to support it if people are saying good things. But thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.